Hey everyone, it's time for this week's episode of Good Morning Cortland, where we recap the week's top stories. State police ended their search for a suspect accused of firing shots from a Dryden home earlier this week after he turned himself in on Wednesday afternoon. 32-year-old Eric J. McLaurin walked into Dryden Town Court at around 4 p.m. Wednesday and surrendered. He was arraigned on a felony charge of criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree. McLaurin was identified as a suspect on Tuesday after state police responded to a report of shots fired from a home on the 1100 block of Route 366 in Dryden at around 2.40 p.m. A woman and young child were reportedly at the residence at the time of the call, but they left on their own accord prior to police arrival. Police closed off Route 366 between Turkey Hill and Baker Hill Roads for several hours, and after making several unsuccessful attempts to make contact with McLaurin, members of the Special Operations Response Team were able to make entry, but McLaurin had already left the residence. After winning the state quarterfinals on Sunday, the Marathon boys basketball team will travel back to Binghamton this weekend as they compete in the state semifinals. Marathon will take on Harrisville in the state semifinal this Saturday at 2.30 p.m. The Cortland Voice will be live tweeting this event, so check out our Twitter feed if you want to stay updated on scores. If Marathon wins on Saturday afternoon, they will move on to the finals on Sunday, which will also be played at Floyd L. Mains Arena in Binghamton. And Cuga Medical Center has unveiled the addition of robotics-assisted technology to its patient offerings. The hospital unveiled the new technology at a press event at its hospital on Monday. The Navio Surgical System, developed by UK-based medical technology company Smith & Nephew, uses a surgeon-controlled robotics-assisted handpiece and eliminates the need for a preoperative CT scan for knee and joint replacements. Cuga Medical Center CEO Dr. Martin Stallone said the initiative came from the physician community and the hospital invested about half a million dollars to bring the technology to the Ithaca and Cortland area. The technology is available for partial and total knee replacements. Monday's event included a virtual reality demonstration in which participants were able to try out the technology for themselves. Dr. Deidre Blake spoke with reporters at the event about the new technology. For Navio, right now I know that it's that, you know, designed for knee replacements. In the future, could we see it perhaps for other parts of we the body? Could, we could certainly see it for hip replacement. I think an amazing application in the future that I would want to see it for would be knee revision surgery, which is going to become huge as the number of total knee replacements increases, so will the revision surgeries. So I personally would love to see it move in that direction because those are the most technically challenging in my opinion. Uh, but the uses are really endless. It could be used for trauma, it could be used for hand, foot, and ankle down the road, who knows. Dr. Blake will be hosting a patient seminar to demonstrate some of the technology that will be happening at 6 p.m. Monday at the Port Watson Conference Center that's located at 131 Port Watson Street in Cortland. The seminar starts at 6. You can visit our website, cortlandvoice.com, to find out how to register, and all registrants will receive a free dinner-style buffet. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified when a new episode gets posted. You can also check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels for latest updates on what's happening in the Cortland community. And as always, visit our website, cortlandvoice.com, for the latest top stories. We'll see you next week.